Shout out to the exhausted <laughs> educator. <laughs> this is a Holding On To Learning LLC production. Woo! The ideas expressed on this show are not the views of their employer. Besides, if you really want to take advice from this guy, well, you should probably do it at your own risk. You're going to love the exhausted educator in <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm super excited to have Dr. Dana Goodyear on with us today, a fellow Teach Better uh, Podcast Network member and also uh, a soon-to-be published author. I'm really excited to have her on to talk about all of that. Dana, thank you so much for jumping on with me tonight. Well, thanks for having me. I'm excited. So... I got a lot of, I just want to like turn it over to you and let you roll with whatever you want to share tonight. I'm really excited. As I, I, I said, before we officially started recording, I think what you're going to share will resonate really well with our audience. Cause we're all mm-hmm. about recharging educational battery during what has been crazy times over the last few years. And, um, and so whatever we can do to provide the audience with um, strategies and stories and just anything feel good, pick you up kind of stuff is it will resonate well with this audience. And I, I know that's kind of where you're, what you're all about. So um, before we jump into all that, though, can you just kind of give everybody a little bit of background to your educational journey from where you've been all the way up to what you're doing now? Yeah, so um, this is my 23rd year in education. And for a lot of those years, I was a French teacher, mostly at the high school level. I also worked as a department chair at a few high schools. Uh, gifted, talented co-coordinator at a large high school. Um, and I did uh, do the principal licensure program uh, about 12 years ago. So about halfway into like where I am now <laughs> um, and uh, taught for a little bit longer, did some English um, regular language arts and then English for uh, second language learners. Um, and then I've worked as a Dean and uh, AP. Um, and have, have even when I was teaching, I had a, a lot of interest in uh, just uh, having um, dig, digging deeper basically into attendance issues with kids finding out what was going on um, so they didn't end up truant right so uh, really supporting those families if a kid uh, was missing school and also looking into systems uh, to avoid um, you know excessive behaviors in the classroom in terms of um, if kids uh, weren't on task or you know teachers uh, finding more time, right, to keep kids on task and to uh, get through the lesson, um, but also to connect with kids. Uh, So I do a lot of PD uh, where I speak at conferences on uh, time on task, and I use some of the experiences that I had in my career um, early on, uh, because when I went to uh, teacher uh, training back in the late 90s, a lot of it was like, here are the, you know, say the rules, you know, this is uh, it's my way or the highway, right? <laughs> uh, very much uh, the authoritarian teacher, uh, and that backfired. You know, it took me a few years to to learn, right? So, because <laughs> I wasn't really being that, um, you know, relationships driven teacher, and I was um, very much reacting to student behavior rather than working to prevent it. So, <laughs> <laughs> I talk a lot about that um, when I do breakout sessions at conferences. I also um, you know, have uh, an EDD in educational leadership. So for that, I researched uh, opt-outs on high stakes tests between 2014 and 2019. So I, um, you know, that's that's something that has like, I was an electives teacher. So we were never, um, you know, I was in a subject matter where the test, we weren't teaching to the test, right? And I, I felt like as a department chair of an elective, we didn't necessarily always get the support when, when it comes to like funding and things like that. Um, so I, um, you know, thought it would, would be interesting to kind of research like schools and how, how much different schools were uh, focusing on getting kids to participate on the test uh, in order to bring up their achievement rating. Um, so I focused on three middle schools and, you know, the participation rate and all that, and then developed PD modules for both parents and teachers um, in the district that I researched. So um, done a lot of different things. Um, I'm all working right now kind of uh, more of a, as a coach for um, English language learner uh, teachers uh, supporting the co-teaching model um, at the secondary level 
Uh, it's been in the district for about 10 plus years, but it's working a lot better at the elementary level than at the <laughs> secondary level, right? So kind of um, helping them become more um, ebb and flow rather than just the guide on the side, uh, because both for, for special ed and for um, ELL teachers, there's a lot of that, like, they don't know where the place is in the classroom. So uh, really helping um, them find um, how they can support the uh, students they're working with, but also um, be that um, second teacher that's not just there for a few students. So, yeah, um, so I've done a lot. Um, yeah, you've got a lot. A lot get, of hats. <laughs> you've got you've got a lot of experiences to draw on. You know, that's amazing. So, uh, you kind of build yourself over over a lot of years in education. Sometimes you blink and you think, "Wow, twenty some years later, I look back and and these are all the pieces that." that have gotten me to this point. You obviously have had an incredible journey to get to where you're at now. I want to dive into your book, but first let me quick ask you about your podcast because I know that goes along with it, right? You want to share with the audience about your podcast? Cause I, I really think that our audience would resonate that, that your podcast would resonate well with our audience if they haven't found it yet. Mm -hmm. So as you mentioned, it's on the teach better podcast network. If you wanted to find it there, but um, you can find it on, you know, Spotify. Um, it's on Podbean, um, so that's where it's housed. Um, um, and so it has over 200 episodes at this point. I celebrated with a live 200th episode. I saw week. that. Congratulations, by yes. the way. That's amazing. It's a great Thank achievement. You. And so it's called Out of the Trenches uh, because, like, I did start it during the pandemic, but I have felt like I've been in the trenches different points in my career and as a um, world language teacher. I was an, in a position sometimes where the funding was cut. Um, I was at a district, a small district at one point where um, there were nine world language teachers spread over two high schools and four of us lost our jobs one year. Hmm. So, you know, those type of stories where it's like, you know, you really don't get like a um, warning about those things, right? And you kind of have to dig yourself out. Um, so I wanted to hear stories of educators who've been there. And this could be when I asked them to share on the podcast, I asked them, you know, it could be a story when you were a new teacher, uh, could be something more recent. Um, it could be something that got you into education. So a few people talk about maybe that how they kind of um, stumbled into education through subbing or through um, a family member, um, even though they were studying something else, they kind of found their way into education and through a story of, um, you know, a hardship at the beginning of the career, they, they stuck with it. And so that's, that's the uh, message that I want to bring through those uh, educators that I uh, highlight on the podcast. Um, but everybody has their own um, niche, right? And um, the episode I'm publishing today is um, Mark Chartier, who's a teacher with Tourette's. So he's talking about his own a journey with Tourette's syndrome, but working as a special ed teacher and connecting with his students. Um, and he talks a lot about his own growing up and how that's helped him um, when he's using uh, trauma-informed practices with his students. So it's, I really like hearing about like what everybody's journey is and like, it's all different, right? And I've, I've interviewed some big names, but I've also interviewed just, just the average Joe teacher, right, right? right? So, and I like, I like to highlight and give people a platform to, to share and um, to talk about like, um, hey, you know, what's, 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 uh, why, why they, what, what their why is and, and, you know, why they stay or sometimes they're consulting, but why they are helping districts and what their goal is in, in that consulting field that they're in. That's great. That's great. And uh, you do a great job, by the way, and you have a, a wide variety of, of people you bring on. And I think your, your, the content you provide is really meaningful and speaking of providing meaningful content, uh, you've got this exciting new project you've been working on that's coming <laughs> out. By the time this this episode drops, I believe hopefully it will be out. Yes. Why don't you share with everybody all about it? So, um, you know, I I reached out to to Darren Peppard, who um, is um, has a publishing company, Road to Awesome, shortly after he launched the company in the spring of 2021, um, thinking, you know, I had some ideas about a book. Um, thinking that, you know, maybe I could turn some of the, my own stories of resilience and a few excerpts from guests of, on the podcast stories. And so, you know, I, I did uh, write a few chapters and, and cut together an outline and, you know, an idea of like what I wanted the book to look like. So 
I signed a contract back in August of 2021. So it's been quite a while until, <laughs> you know, now it's uh, going to be a finally uh, published product. But, um, you know, as I said, it, it does talk a lot about like some of these things that I mentioned. I don't think I mentioned exactly that story from that district, but there's different stories, like even during student teaching or um, a school I ended up after that. And it's just, for me, like I read a lot of books um, and, and not to harp on any of these people, but sometimes I feel like, well, that, that person's been supported a lot. They've had some great mentors in their educational career. Um, it's kind of been the opposite for me. <laughs> it's like, you know, hard, you know, not, not to like, I've had to go out and search for those mentors. Right. So they haven't yeah. necessarily been at the building I've worked at. So like, um, I, I've used a lot of resources from the principal center, um, the Justin Bader leads, for example, and been a part of Danny Bowers, Better Leaders, Better Schools uh, for about four years. So, you know, I've, I've really found that community in um, both his mastermind and also the Teach Better team um, in, the, in the past couple of years. But um, so a lot of what I talk about in the book is also like, how do you uh, dig yourself out of the trenches when you're in the trenches um, and how you stay out and, and, you know, having those tools um, and the tools can be, you know, working with people at your school, maybe to find a book um, that will resonate with you uh, for a book study or, you know, developing, like I said, I do some professional development on developing your own PD, personalized uh, PD plan and uh, identifying your own goals. Uh, there's a lot out there these days. So like really narrowing that down. Um, and, and for some teachers that I mentioned on the book, it could be like, um, are you kind of stuck in that same place? Like you're just kind of going through the motions. You've had the same job for, you know, 10, 15 or 20 years. And maybe, you know, you feel like you want to branch out, but you, you're you not really sure. So it's like, you know, how do you know when it's time to change? Right. So, um, and, and then how do you know, like, if you should stay, like if there are things in a building that you don't always think are great, like, like when's the time to leave and, and what, what is your place also? Like I've, I've been in that role as a, as a teacher and as an admin where like you, you have to kind of uh, know when to stay your lane, right? And, and uh, like where your locus of control is, but also like, um, you know, the grass isn't always greener on the other <laughs> side. So like whatever situation you're in, like how can you uh, best serve the students that you're working with? That's great. That's great. It can, I, I don't know how deep you want to go into uh, your book. You know, I, I guess if we go too deep, nobody will, you know, give you too much information. <laughs> they might not want to read it, but could you maybe share maybe, maybe just some of your, you know, one or two of your favorite pieces that, that you have in the book or maybe a story or something from the book to kind of tease it out a little bit, maybe get people, you know, try to help you promote it a little bit and, and whet the appetite a little bit. So maybe people will be more willing, you know, get out there and snag it when it hits yeah, so I have um, a story from Tyson Garden um, in the book, and when I had him on the podcast, you know, he's uh, kind of had that same road as myself, um, so he did his principal licensure program. It took him seven years to actually land a job <laughs> as <laughs> wow. an administrator, right, and he didn't get up, give up, right, and um, some of the, like, I talk about his story and kind of like, you know, going to interviews and not knowing kind of like, did he do something wrong or like, you know, why didn't they want him type thing. But I also tie that into like, um, you know, um, just kind of the feelings that I had, uh, going through interviews and how like, you know, uh, don't take it personally, but like try to, you know, work, work through that and, um, you know, keep going if that's what you really want to do. So, um, I'm not going to tell too much of his story, but he does, um, you know, talk a little bit about how he persevered. Um, I also, you know, talk about a, uh, another educator who's, uh, pretty new when he was, uh, interviewed about two years ago at this point, um, Stephen Gumpton, and he teaches uh, career tech ed. Um, uh, but he got into it from, um, he talked a lot about his experience, uh, in high school and middle school and that trench story. And how student, um, as a student, he had teachers that connected with him. And, and that's kind of got him into where he is today. But before he taught, he was working as an EMT. And so now he's teaching courses uh, for high schoolers um, in the EMT field and helping them prepare for those um, post-secondary options. So, um, you know, that's kind of a different way of like people got into education, not the traditional way. 
but like, how are they serving students now based on like how they uh, were touched by a teacher uh, growing up? So um, yeah, I think, as I said, kind of on the podcast, there's a lot of um, different stories uh, from educators that got in uh, through different ways. Uh, I'll, I'll say also one other um, excerpt I share about uh, Sherry Anna Boyle, who is a, uh, a coach um, working with te uh, teachers and people um, just on emotional detox and kind of um, it's in that, you know, social emotional setting, but she was working as a school counselor. And, um, you know, this was uh, about 20 years ago in her story and how um, she didn't really use those tools to take care of herself as a new mom, right? And, mm. and that burnout piece. So there are a few stories like hers that I highlight about people uh, being burnt out, right? And having even physical symptoms. <laughs> so yeah. like, yeah. how, how do you uh, go from there, like either staying in education or turning that around to helping other people um, and, um, you know, we really got to be aware of, um, physical reactions. Like I've, I've been in some positions where like I've had migraines because of the stress level. Right. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I just, you know, some of the things that I write is like, I, I, I always get outside the building, even if I only have 15 or 20 minutes, I make sure it, even if it's really cold, like I'll, I'll get outside <laughs> the building and just take a walk, you know, and I, I need to get my steps in anyways. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, I, I think it sounds amazing, to be honest with you. And um, I want to wrap up on this particular kind of going along with your topic of resilience in education. And what kind of advice do you have for anybody uh, just as far as like being a resilient educator, as you say, kind of working yourself through some of the challenges and so forth? Just any general advice you want to offer out to, to everybody? Um, you know, I really think it's uh, finding a network of people uh, that you can rely on. And as I mentioned, um, for me, it wasn't really at the school. Um, you know, sometimes that backfired, <laughs> like, yeah. you know, that I thought I could trust people and it, it didn't always work or people, you know, in, in a school I worked at that had a poor culture, talk behind uh, people's backs. So, um, you know, reaching out and um, finding a network on, you know, Twitter or, um, you know, Facebook, any social media, but sometimes those are also very like um, superficial. Mm -hmm. So I think the best is finding a mastermind. Like I mentioned these admin masterminds, but there's also teacher masterminds. Um, one of the guests that I write about in the book, Amber Harper has a mastermind for teachers. There's also Happy Teacher Revolution, uh, Dana Thomas, who has a mastermind for teachers. So there's ones out there um, where, you know, they, they meet, I think, weekly and um, they do workshops together. So uh, don't be afraid to reach out um, beyond your building and beyond your district, because there could be issues that, you know, you don't want people necessarily in your own workplace to know about that you're dealing right. with. Right. Um, and it's good to have that ear of people, um, that non-biased opinion. So I really think like, and then you feel like you're not alone. Like one thing is listening to a podcast or reading a book and hearing stories, right? But mm -hmm. also like be able to talk to somebody. Um, and of course it's going to be virtually on Zoom. Usually if you're reaching <laughs> out to a network like that, but um, hearing that people are going through the same thing and some advice that they can give you. Um, so you don't give up. Cause I think, you know, we've seen in the last couple of years there are a lot of people leaving. Um, and uh, you know, I think they're, they're, there are other fields that they can work in, but like myself, it's like, yeah, I've tried to do translating because I speak several languages, but it's like, you need a translation uh, credential for that. Um, so I've done some on the side, but it's like, you know, that's be what I've, what I've studied and what, what my heart, where my heart is, is education, right? So like I can do things on the side sometimes based on the other talents that I have, but I think a lot of people might leave education and do something they might not always be like really fulfilling for them, but they just can't handle the stress anymore. So I'm trying to share stories so people don't leave it kind of in that. Right. Um, with we those need, feelings. We need good people. <laughs> we, <laughs> we need good people and, and we, we don't have enough and we need more and we need to hold on to the ones that we can and as long as we can, if possible, just for the sake of all the children out there and our, all the youth in our schools who need yeah. good, solid people leading them. So uh, I really like what you talked about as far as finding your network, finding people. So in, in my position, we do a wide variety of things. One of the roles is a 
leader of, of uh, like looking over a mentoring program for our district, one of the first things I share with new teachers is find somebody. You want to find somebody you can trust, somebody that you can work with. Hopefully it's within that building. But as you said, if it's not, see if you can connect with some people in some other ways as well. I think that just makes sense. All really good advice, Dana. I really appreciate your time today. Before, before we jump, would you mind sharing how any, anybody could connect with you if they wanted to? So my website is danagoodier.com. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Dana Goodyear. Also, the podcast is at Out of Trenches PC. Um, there's also an Instagram site. You can find me on LinkedIn, Facebook. And um, my uh, book is on Road to Awesome. So um, you can go to the Road to Awesome publishing website. Uh, it'll be on Amazon when it comes out. Um, thanks so much for having me. Oh, happy to have you. Thank you so much for all the great work you're doing. Appreciate you. Party time. Like, bull, bull, bull. sirens are going off in my head. We're going to try to just not be horrible. I'm watching you, exhausting entertainers. Always watching. Last kiss is missed.